Matchy ball, you want to go? Matchy ball. Well, this is probably going to kill it, but... Oh my god! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the council in part four of our playthrough of episode two, Hide and Seek. We are still in the first chapter. We have yet to gain skill points, we have yet to sleep, and we are deep into unraveling a mystery. In part three, we spent a lot of time here in the box room solving a puzzle and finding some correspondence between Emma Hillsborough and our mom, who may or may not be a vicious murderer. That's how it's looking at this stage. She looks like potentially a multi-murderer. Is that what you say? Mass murderer? Uh, I don't think you say multi-murderer. That's a multi-millionaire. Anyway, uh, guys, we have been called to meet with the other guests, and I imagine some confrontations are on the way. Let's see what lies ahead. And there you go, episode two in chapter five in the story. Success. I refused to indicate a culprit to Lord Mortimer. Success. I found all the correspondence between my mother and E aka Emma Hillsborough, and finally I discovered my mother's message. However, I did not understand my mother's message. That is our first failure in this entire playthrough. Now, at the end there, I was given two choices. It must be an allegory, aka a metaphor, or it must be literal. I chose the metaphor, thinking that made sense. She's used those in the past, in fact, quite often, but um, clearly that is wrong. Good news for us is we will recover some stats and we will level up. So at the moment, I am eager to accomplish a couple of things. Gaining my first skill level in a few of these categories. I have four available points, erudition, logic, and uh, science. Now I could make myself leveled up deeper into manipulation. I know I want to do over time psychology and manipulation. I could put two in manipulation or I could work out one of these fully. Let's fully work out erudition. We will then throw another point on manipulation and we will see what we have for books to read. Um, I can actually take a look at that and see what lies ahead. Oh, er you know what? Maybe we maybe we do an erudition through this. It won't come through right away. All right, guys, I, I have reconsidered this. I think I'm going to put two in manipulation. I'm going to put two in erudition and we will read a book on erudition. That is right. Let's go down to, I have two choices, one choice. Let's go ahead and read The Hortus Delicarium by Harare de Landsberg, whatever it's all about. And we will lock this in. And we are on to quest number six. What lies ahead, geeks? If you enjoy, click the it's like button. I went back and joined everyone in the small salon. Uh, our best episode in this series, I think, has 50 or so likes. So that would be an amazing goal to hit. And it's time to head for the small salon. Now, I always take my opportunities when left alone in the hall to see if any rooms are left open for investigation. Johan's is not. This would be a path down to the salon. No, it would not. All right, so let's go through Piaggi's room. I think we will continue to get denied on. I'm pretty sure he is old von Borchert. Am I crazy? Tell me if I'm crazy. And that is the crime scene locked. I imagine we will find nothing. I don't even know if we'll be able to go in our own room here. George's locked. Uh, at least I know my way around the halls now. That is one one thing, one benefit. And Piaggi's room lies just ahead. This is always closed to us. That will open up at some point, just like the box room did. What have we got here? Piaggi? Nothing. And our own room. Nothing. I didn't think so. We have one neighbor on this side, Manuel Godoy. Uh, he must be arriving at some point soon. He was mentioned in our previous conversation. Oh, that is the sound of sweeping. Emily's room locked off. So I imagine the last two rooms, those of Napoleon and um, 
Peru will be locked as well. But I just want to be a thorough man and check them all out. Let's make sure. Yeah. All right. I think we've seen everything there is to see. This is not the staircase to take to the small salon. Evidently not. Let's go to this one in the middle. And I think this will take us out of here. And we will go see what lies ahead. Um... Also, hit me up in the comments, guys. Am I crazy about the Von Borchert thing? Am I crazy about Mortimer being immortal? Who knows? And there is Zeus. Emily, I must speak to you. What's the matter, Louis? About last night, I'm guessing. I, sadly, <laughs> no. Even if I'd like to have, I... Alas, there are more pressing matters. I have news about your sister. What have you found out? Look... I've started piecing together the events leading up to my mother's disappearance and your sister's. D did my mother know about your secret? Yes, even though I belong to the English chapter, her rank in the Order gives her access to a good deal of personal information. It must have been Emma I saw in my vision. Oh, like I we haven't figured that out a long time my ago, mother and your sister Come on, you idiot. bonded during their stay. Um, speak about the messages, ask her, go beyond the nightmare. Don't send her on my mother's trail. Oh, I trust her. Should I not? Why, why don't send her on my mother's trail? I came here to speak with her. I've got a question that might seem a little bit strange. I'm listening. If I said go beyond the nightmare, would that ring any bells? Hmm. No, means nothing to me. Do you mean literally or figuratively speaking? Well, I think I think that we we got that wrong. It might be a place I I don't know where, but it's a lead. You ought to ask his eminence. He knows the house and its estate very well, being a frequent visitor here. Thanks for the advice. Should I speak to her about my vision? If what I saw is true, she might want to take revenge. Guys, we have been through this story together up until this point. You saw me make the tough choice in the hallway to stick with Emily. And, uh to leave Elizabeth and we know the consequences of those actions keep quiet or tell her my instinct is to spill my guts tell her of my vision she might not believe my vision she doesn't believe anything god this is such a tough choice I gotta tell Emily, her there's something else Go on, then. That's not how you spell honest. It's about your sister. I don't know what happened exactly, but it's possible that my mother had a go at her. I know, Louis. I found out that same evening. Well, thanks for not trying to hide it. Yes! What? Why didn't you tell me? I didn't know if I could trust you. Now I know I can. It yes! It seems that your mother tricked Emma. She apparently asked her to hide an important book so that even she wouldn't know where it was. And then she shot her like a dog to make sure no one would ever find it again. What is that yelling? Who spoke to her about it? The answer's Lord Home. Does she know why? Why would she do that? I don't know, Louis. But I'll find out. You can count on that. We have an ally. I'm sincerely sorry, Emily. Thank you, Louis. You're very kind. It means a lot to me. But you do realize your mother will have to accept the consequences of her acts. Th there must be an explanation, Emily. That's what we shall see. We'll speak about it later, somewhere safe. Come, Louis. They're waiting for us. We're about to walk in on a confrontation. I'm sure you were involved somewhere along the line. That's right. Pretend you don't know. One piece of advice. Don't travel through France on your way back, or it'll cost you dearly. Calm now, my friends. Let's calm down. Everyone seems to be a little unnecessarily heated. Don't forget where you are, please. What's going on here exactly? Sir Gregory called us together to introduce the last guest. 
But hardly had we arrived when he set upon Monsieur Peru. It's Manuel Godoy, and we know that answer. And what has Mr. Peru done to once again provoke someone's anger? Uh, we don't really know just yet. I get the feeling it won't be long before it gets out. How could you dare do such a thing? Dios mio, you are all out of your minds! Really, Duke Manuel, what made you kick up such a fuss? What? Have you not heard? Well, let me inform you that yesterday morning at 10.22 a.m. precisely, in the middle of the Place de la Révolution in Paris, by decree of the National Convention which Monsieur Peru works for, King Louis was guillotined. What? Oh, no. The King of France is dead, gentlemen. Our monarchies are in danger. I have said it before. How dare they? Oh, dear. Oh, as if it oh, gracious. Gracious. No, it's not oh, it's it's hmm. Friends, friends, let us calm down. Don't pretend to be surprised. He got a fair trial. Ridiculous, bastard. He was sentenced to death by 361 votes to 360. You beheaded a king for one vote. Is that your democracy? What an obnoxious act. Until this, anything was possible. This political coup will have grave consequences. France is lost. Gentlemen, please, let us take a step back a moment. In the name of holiness, he was the highest representative of God in France, Emily. Let's do this. Gentlemen, Duchess, we're all among people of reputable company here. We should be able to manage the conflicts of our nations in a respectful and orderly manner. I fully agree with you, sir. But that's enough, sir. With whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? Louis Maurras de Richer. Are you related to Sarah de Richer? Sarah is his mother, Duke. Gentlemen, this news affects us all, but I must ask you to remain calm. It's not the first time history has taken us by surprise. Let's ensure that our respective countries are allowed to respond appropriately to this news. Oh, rest assured. The response will not fall short, my friend. Good for you. Well, Your Grace, here I was preparing to introduce you as is proper, and you've beaten me to it. I'm delighted that we are all together at last. Our meeting will therefore be able to kick off shortly. I have just a few more little preparations to take care of before you all find out the reason for your presence here. In the meantime, I shall leave you to get to know one another. When you hear the bell, please proceed to the conclave room on my left, behind that door. I'll see you later. All right, guys. We may only have a limited time here to speak with each of these people. Piaggi is on the list based on Emily's recommendation. Godoy, we should obviously uh, could speak you to. Spare a moment, please. Uh, Maybe the decisions will be yes. made for us. I want to talk to you too. Of course. Confrontation. I heard about your mother's disappearance. He looks concerned. I don't know why, but I doubt it's from sympathy alone. Well, let's see what he wants from me. Only Any news of her? Chance. Have you found her? Maybe. All right, let's take a Devil's Thorn. And we have found his vulnerability. It's a freebie. Let's drop it. Does Clear he know you her? speak, you seem to know my mother well. Uh, not really. Uh, we met for the first time on this very spot uh, some weeks back. Uh, we had a very pleasant discussion. She's an exceptionally learned lady with a good head for business. Uh, no need for me to tell you that. I agree. Uh, did she tell you about our arrangement? Okay. Prompt him to talk about it. How could I know? Uh, absolutely, but I was hoping that you could tell me more about it. Well, she was planning to sell me a very old book. I will make no secret of the fact that I am passionate about the subject. And when Sarah spoke to me about it, her account literally had me enthralled. 
<laughs> I can think of nothing else since. You might have come across some old books in her belongings, perhaps? String him along, speak to him about the Mysterium Cosmographicum. Maybe that's it. We did find that in her possessions. I found one. Quite old, with locks on every chapter. Uh, oh, no. I'm sorry, sir. This one is the Mysterium Cosmographicum, a book she is particularly fond of. Oh, no. That's not the one. He's oh, after man, disgusted. the Necronomicon. Nerves. I'll look again. You seem very upset. Fifteen is seconds. It so Come on. important to you, this book? Well, it's, uh, it's the search of a lifetime. What can I say? Every time I move closer to it, it seems to slip away at the last minute. I was very surprised to learn that your mother had it in her possession. I thought it was with a certain von Borchert in Paris. Do you know him? Okay. Now this could be this could be a vulnerability. Let's drop another one of these. Okay, absolutely not. Uh, uh freebie. Indeed. One of your close friends? Uh, no, not really, but we were close once. Precisely over the case that concerns us now, because he claimed to have the book I'm looking for. Another dishonest person. What can you say? Can't trust anyone these days, huh? No. No. You can't. I hope I've been able to satisfy your curiosity, Mr. Von Volner, and that you succeed in finding what you're looking for. Oh, and so do I. And now, what if you told me who you really are working for, instead of keeping up this pretense? I beg your pardon? We both know what you're looking Bring for. Bring it on, von bud. Volner. You're the one who Von Burchard was planning to sell it to. For centuries, all those who have come into contact with the Al Azif regretted it, Monsieur de Richet. You are playing a dangerous game. Please know that I am working for someone who does not appreciate anyone poking around in his business. Let me guess. Uh, home already has someone working for him. It could be Mortimer. This is the obvious choice. Your dear king, I should think. What? You mean Frederick William? Oh, my poor fellow. You are miles away. That stupid, pretentious Idiot. puppet we knew that. wields no real power. We knew but that. Seeing as you do not wish to be serious, so be it. Good luck to you. God dang it. I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. Emily told me in the first chapter that uh that that he was the true power in Prussia and that what's his face was a was a just a oh it doesn't matter let's have a look around before we go and engage hey, in a new these conversation look like pages taken from an ancient encyclopedia and this is locked i presume yes it is all right guys well this happens in this game you make mistakes chronicles of the amber princes as I recall, Dorkin was my favorite character. There's a pattern with five circles on this chest. Do I have that key? Use the key. Oh boy. No space left. I'll retrieve it later. Golden elixir. Cures negative alterations. Okay, so there's a lot of golden elixir there. If we need to use it, we will have to go back for that. That is a lot of elixir. We will continue searching this room, have a good look around, and then we will go engage in a little convo with Mr. Bonaparte. All right, well, let's go see what this French fool has to say. King Louis has been guillotined, and he looked surprised, maybe? We did get a brief look at his face. Monsieur Bonaparte, may I speak with you a moment? May we? Does expression go beyond the nightmare mean anything to you at all? Well, metaphorically, yes. It sums up the career of a soldier quite well. I doubt that is what you want to hear, though. Indeed. That's surely not what I'm looking for. Well, monsieur, if you are looking for a phrase book, Lord Mortimer must surely have one. 
Given the number of books he has, you ought to check in the library of the tower. You never know. Would you have any more information about the comforts Lord Mortimer spoke of? Nothing at all. Mortimer is very committed to secrecy when it comes to his conferences. But given the presence of Monsieur Peru and ourselves, I think it must concern France to some extent. Otherwise, I doubt he would have invited three Frenchmen to his table, huh? And let's ask about Godoy here. What do you think of Duke Godoy? Well, I'd rather not express any opinion of him. Why is that? His reputation is enough for me. Okay, now we need to take the opportunity to uh, remind ourselves of what we already know about Napoleon. I think vulnerable to etiquette and not to politics. Vulnerable to etiquette, immune to conviction in politics. Uh, so that is diversion. It's a freebie or one unquestioning. Let's go with our freebie here. I'm sure that a soldier such as yourself is not interested in vulgar rumors. Quite right. If only this cursed gossip didn't come to stain the uniform he has the audacity to wear. Don't you find him worthy? But how could he be, monsieur? He never sets foot on the battlefield to occupy it with charming the queen. Have you any idea of the number of titles that coward has won in just a few years? No, not really. Ten! And that Don Juan spends the best part of his time under the queen's skirts. The bugger must have some hidden talent, given all of the gifts she gives him. I understand your point of view. Interesting. Yes, we did learn about that in the first pe time through. I think we have asked everything there well, is. Well, I'll be leaving you now. Shall we meet up again later? Uh, wait, monsieur. Any news of your mother? Unfortunately not, no. I hope to speak with her about my deal before I leave. Let me know if you find her. A plus tard, monsieur. All right. Well, we have been through this room. We have uh, chatted with old Napoleon, and I think it's time to move on to the next room. Hopefully a chance to chat with Piaget and Godoy. Oh, wow. And we are back in the main hall. Where are... Oh, Lord. I didn't expect to come through here. All right. So let's see if anyone is by the fire. It seems not. All right, guys, we have a chance to meet with Washington and a chance to go upstairs on one side. Same thing over here. Yes. And what about over here? Yes, there are so many places we could go. It is really hard to say. I think we take our opportunity to chat with old Georgie boy. See what he has to say. Mr. President, can you tell me a little more about the coming conference? Of course, Louis. That's why we're here. Lord Mortimer or Sir Gregory regularly organize meetings like this to put forward major projects. What do you mean by major projects? I'd prefer to let Lord Mortimer explain that to you, Louis. Let's say he brings together influential people in order to consider possible actions to undertake to guarantee the future of nations. Do you know the theme of the conference? Not in the slightest. France. None of the guests know the theme before arriving. But you'll see. Everything will turn out fine. Don't worry. Go beyond the nightmare. Does this line remind you of anything in particular? You've caught me unaware here, Louis. Let me think about it a second. No. Nothing comes to mind. Sorry, Louis, but I am unable to help you. And a question on Godoy. Mr. President, what do you think about your counterpart, Duke Manuel? I am very surprised he was able to accept Lord Mortimer's invitation, given the political situation in Spain. Speak about the rumors, that seems like a bad topic, and then what context? That seems worth the points. What do you mean? The situation is ready to explode with France over Catalonia. Well, the Duke must have a darn good reason to be absent and come here, mustn't he? When Lord Mortimer invites you, Louis, you come. It's always in your best interest. I wouldn't say that personally, but... 
All right, and that seems to be everything there is. Well, thank you for your time. Don't mention it, my young friend. Regarding your question on the nightmare, don't hesitate to question the others about it. Maybe one of them knows more than I do. That's a good idea. Thank you once again. I'll see you in a little bit. All right, guys, we continue the investigation and now have three options. Uh, two staircases leading us upstairs, and I'm quite certain those take us back to the bedrooms. Um, so I may as well head up there. Let's go have a look, and when we'll come back, we'll come back and poke our heads through this door right here. Um, when I originally came through this uh, this entranceway, we spent a lot of time looking at the art, and this piece of art in particular is a very important one in the story. It is Saturn devouring his son. Good God, how awful! Now that everything in this painting is disturbing. It's the first time I've seen brushstrokes like this. That is fascinating, because if you have the erudition skill in episode one, you have the opportunity to ask about that painting, and you're told by Lord Holm that it's been painted by Lord Mortimer himself. Now, fascinatingly, that painting in history doesn't come into existence until the 1830s, good 37 or so years from now, I think. Uh, and uh, it's painted by a guy named... Uh, uh, Francisco Goya, and not, of course, by anyone named Lord Mortimer. So that is a fascinating part of the, t the tale. It means something. And he does have different variations of that painting, but that particular one that I just showed you doesn't exist yet in history. So it's quite bizarre. I think there's a book or two like that in the, in the game as well. They all must be clues or Easter eggs as to who Lord Mortimer really is. Let's go upstairs. Now, I imagine there will be nothing up here, but let's have a look around and make sure. This is just a It's odd that it would allow us back up here if there was nothing up here. But I'm a thorough man. I want to make sure we, we investigate all possibilities, and so I shall. This is the other staircase down. Aha! Aha! There's clues up here. Of course there are. Clues to find a beautiful woman. What's up, girl? How you doing? What do you want, Louis? What do you think of our last guest? Well, I never thought I would get the chance to meet that Hispanic Casanova in the flesh. His reputation is well known. The gentleman collects lovers, including, would you believe it, the Queen of Spain. Uh, mention the rumor? That doesn't seem like it's worth it, does it? The Queen of Spain likes to indiscreetly say, the King, Godoy, and myself make up the Holy Trinity. The people have appropriately renamed them the Goat, the Ruffian, and the Whore. <laughs> I didn't see you being a mudslinger in your idle hours, I must say. Huh. All right, and let's see. I don't think she knows Emily, this. Emily, what can you tell me about the coming conference? Sir Gregory and Lord Mortimer organize this kind of high society meeting every so often in order to consider the world situation. But to what purpose? Well, by bringing together the most influential people from the dominant nations of the modern world, they allow the mighty to discuss matters with calm clarity. There are precedents of armistices being signed at the end of these talks, you know. Talking while holding a glass of brandy makes things easier. You'll see. All right. You're leaving me? Unfortunately, I have things to do. Thank you again, madam. All right, guys, let's continue our search through the place. Um, there will probably be more people upstairs, and maybe we'll get a look at old Godoy's room. Maybe he came up here uh, first and foremost. Can we go further upstairs? This is probably a no, right? We can. I imagine the answer is no. Mortimer's not here, but we have a chance to look around his place on our own. Let's take a closer look. All right, let's spend some time. These chocolates are probably a protocol gift. Everybody in Europe loves them nowadays. Marie Antoinette, the Queen of France, has her own personal chocolate maker, Versailles. 
They say it's her guilty little morning ritual before getting dressed. A cup with one sugar and some vanilla, if I remember rightly. I would be surprised if Mortimer has them delivered straight from South America. I'm not going to take a chocolate. Should I? Yeah, you only live once. Dark chocolate beans. Very bitter. They're greatly prized in high society. Now I don't trust this this bird not to not to tell not to tell on us. Basically, what do we have here? What is that? No, no. What have we got here? Well, it looks like a model, a model of a lock. As if Mortimer is fond of complicating things sometimes. Well, I hope I never have to try and unlock it. All right, and two letters. Dear Mr. Guido Poletti, I am writing with regards to the dates of the paintings I sent you for your temporary exhibition. Please note that they are part of my private collection and are dated according to the Freemasons calendar in use at that time. As you may well have guessed, you must remember to subtract 4,000 years if you don't want the public to be surprised at the dating works. No need to remind you that the Freemason year begins in March and not January. About the Longinus painting, I took the liberty of having the spear touched up so it better corresponds to the actual spear, uh, and I cannot urge you strongly enough to do the same for yours. For yours. Like he has a copy of the same painting? Lord Mortimer. So 4,000 years, and the year starts in March. Counts for the year 1792. Food, candles, stone, marble, wood, glass, master paintings, fabric, wine, water, and powder. These are not... Oh, wow. These are not weights. These are amounts spent. Right? And he spent 9277 on wood. Remember to do minus 4,000, and it starts in March, not January. I have no clue what any of this means. I'm very glad we came up here. Can we have a look at this stupid bird? A minor bird. Sarah de Riche? Waldo, you know Sarah? Well, Waldo, is your master good? Well, this is probably going to kill it, but... <laughs> yes! Oh, wow. What have I done? It looks like I've killed him. Oh, shit. I better not hang around. Oh, my God. Sometimes you make some really terrible decisions in this game, guys. I just killed Lord Mortimer's bird. Ah, uh, I could have given him cherries. I could have given him a cherry. Hmm. Might come in handy. Yeah, feed it to the bird, idiot. Oh my god. <laughs> that is Mortimer. A family ancestor, apparently. Huh. No, he's immortal. He's immortal, I tell you what. Unfortunately for him, though, his bird is not. Hang on. What's this painting? Find the Nightmare. The Nightmare painted by Fusili in 1781. Ah, this must be what my mother was talking about. Now just need to find out what she meant by Go Beyond. Hey. Make it easy. Looks like it's mounted on rails on each side. It should lift up, I think. There must be a mechanism somewhere. Find the nightmare. Find a mechanism to move the painting. I can't believe I killed that stupid bird. I feel like such an idiot. I said it, and then it happened. <laughs> no mechanism here. The mechanism must be this lock. Oh, 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 no. Uh, 
Oh, come on. Better not uh -huh. hang around, he says. It. Oh, what on earth is this? A ring lock now? Great. That's all I needed. Alright, find the mechanism to move the painting. The clue exists no, no, here. What have we got here? Well, it looks like a model. A model of a lock. It's as if Mortimer is fond of complicating things sometimes. Well, I hope I never have to try and unlock it. This painting now has a thing on it. This painting isn't finished. And it looks like Mortimer probably did it. Not bad, but you can't exactly say it's been done in the style of the period. I bet if that bird was alive, he would know. <laughs> History of the First Crusades by Pierre Amédée de la Salle. Strange. All the dates are all wrong. They indicate events that took place in the year 5000 and something? Wait, did I miss something? No, we've got it. Come on, doofus. The First Crusade, the Second Crusade, link the author to the dates. The author is Pierre Amade de la Salle, none other than the Grand Master of the Masonic Lodge of Paris. Now I understand why the dates are offset. He's using dates based oh, on I the knew this. year zero of the Masonic calendar by adding 4,000 years to the Gregorian calendar. I thought that that calendar starts in March. Okay, the first crusade. The famous call of Pope Urban II. Twenty years after the capture of Jerusalem from the Arabs by the Turks, Urban II convened the council. He promises a plenary indulgence to Christians who go and get Jerusalem back from the Turks. The result, the Jewish community on the road to Jerusalem found itself persecuted for no reason. 12,000 Jews would perish. Not to mention the massacre of Ma'ara, where acts of cannibalism by Frankish crusaders were reported, or even the capture of Jerusalem, where approximately 30,000 were left dead. It signaled the beginning of centuries of wars of religion. I guess we read about all of or these. how Louis VII, King of France, eager to be pardoned for the death of thousands of innocent people in the fire of the Church of Vitry, convinces the Pope to authorize him to lead his own crusade. The result? In Germany, a new outburst of violence against the Jewish community. And a monumental fiasco by poor Louis VII, cuckolded by his wife's uncle. In the Third Crusade? The famous call from Pope Gregory VIII in his Odita Tremendi Bull of 5,187. Oh, the crusade where Richard the Lionheart distinguished himself. It states the first sea blockade of Saint-Jean d'Acre was broken in the 12th month That's of it. 5,190 AL, whereas the siege had been going on for two years. Five, so it's, it's 5,190, 5,192, or 1,190, 1,192, one of those? Let's see if one of these paintings is about that siege. Hey, there are two dates on this painting. 1154 AD and 5154 AL. No thanks, not spending points on that. I know, it's just gonna tell me to subtract 4,000. I already wasted two points on that. All right, and this is of a crucifixion. It's certainly not the one that we need. Coup de Lance by Paul Rubens. I'm gonna come back to this. I'm, I'm very low on, I have, I don't have that many points on me at the moment. This obviously is our Lord Mortimer. Anything about it? William Alexander Mortimer the first, the 12th month of Anna Lucis. Right. 5,190. That's the funny date. That funny date again. So 5190, the fifth month. Uh, so that would be March, April, May, June, July of, of 1190. That funny date again. That date in 5000 and something again. 
Hmm. I wonder what in the world it means. So Mortimer spoke to our mother uh, about that siege of Saint John d'Arc, d'Arc, whatever they say. And um, this is this it? A and, painting depicting the Third Crusade. Yes, yes. It's titled "Winter Before the Fall of Saint Jean d'Arc." Siege of Saint Jean d'Arc. It was a major conflict during the Third Crusade. Richard the Lionheart and Philip Augustus fought to take the town back. It was the Crusaders' first operation to take back the Kingdom of Jerusalem. Indeed. All right. So 5190 or 1190. I get the impression I've seen that before. In fact, I've read something on the Crusades before in the study. He clearly loves the subject. Let's go try a code on the door. Let's try and see what we can come up with here, guys. Okay, this is smoother than I thought it would be. Now, I did want to point out... No. Okay, let's go ahead and try this and see. Notice something, lower the levers, move away. <laughs> maybe, I tr maybe I see what happens when I do 1190 and click on the lever. That's probably the something you have to notice. Three points, three points. Doesn't work, damn it. I really thought I was close. 1,190. Isn't the right date when you subtract 4,000? I must have missed a subtlety. Damn it. Doesn't work. 5,190. I was pretty sure it was right. Maybe I didn't use the right dating system. All right, the only other date that makes significant sense is this. Well, I got it wrong. It doesn't matter. All right, guys, so what I am going to do, I need to spend a golden elixir to cure negative alterations i think i may as well do this and do this and then do that that way uh those don't count towards me being drunk and we're gonna oh okay we're gonna set this on 1190 and we're going to see we're gonna use a skill here notice something watch the rollers looks like there's a marker on number one on the second roller what Oh, come on. If this is the same thing, I'm going to lose it. It's a complex mechanism. Hmm. Looks like the third ring is a bit seized up. It gets stuck on number nine. This is not helping me, Louis. I can't believe I just spent six points on that. Doesn't work, damn it. I really thought I was close. 1,190. Isn't the right date when you subtract 4,000? I must have missed a subtlety. The winter, the winter before. So 1189, 1191. So maybe that three month thing really adds in. Yes, okay. Come on, I can't believe I spent the points. I should have remembered sesame. that. <laughs> Is Emily waiting for me in here again? <laughs> I 
I hate to leave you with a cliffhanger, geeks, but part four of our playthrough is going to end right here. And in part five, I will search Lord Mortimer's secret study for clues about Mom's disappearance. We have gone beyond the nightmare. We are hot on her trail. We have killed his minor bird. It's been a heck of an episode. I very much hope you enjoy. If you did, click the like button. Dive into the comments. Tell me what you think of the story, the mystery, the puzzles. Are you solving them faster than I am? I'm having a great time playing. This part, this this new episode started off very slowly, but it is picking up steam, and I am having a wonderful time playing through. So popping up on your screen right now, links to episode one and my playthrough of The Mad Ones, the playlist for this episode two and my playthrough of Hide and Seek, and for my Patreon page. If you really appreciate this content, go join for a buck a month. It goes an incredibly long way for a guy like me trying to get by on the income from his videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in part five of our playthrough.